Jim Laris. I'm the Dean of Computer Science here at EPFL. Um, my lab does very large-scale computing, basically looking at how do you build the computers uh, in a very large data center in the cloud that underlie a lot of the computation that's done these days, both the applications that run on devices such as your phone, but also for doing very large-scale machine learning uh, and uh, computations in various other scientific and commercial disciplines. To me, intelligent systems are systems that uh, can learn from previous experience from their environment, can adapt to uh, their environment, and are not static. They're not just developed by a programmer to solve a particular set of problems and then shipped, but actually continue to evolve as they are used out there in the system. And um, as such, they are uh, much more able to respond and interact with human beings. They may have attributes uh, that we associate with human beings, such as the ability to see things, the ability to converse uh, using natural language, using speech, as well as typed uh, text. Um, so they're systems that have some attributes of intelligence to them. I wouldn't confuse them with actually being intelligent, but they have more than what we traditionally associate with computers and computer systems. So right now, I think uh, the most exciting aspect of intelligent systems is machine learning. Basically, the techniques that have been developed over the past five, six, seven years, in particular around deep learning, have led to amazing advances in a number of different aspects of intelligent systems and allowed us to build things that we just couldn't have imagined building even a decade ago. So um, the advances still continue. It's a challenging area, but there's uh, an immense amount of work going on right now to improve the performance and also to develop new applications for machine learning. I, hopefully what, what will happen is that it will become less of a specialized field that requires uh, domain experts in intelligent systems or machine learning to actually develop it. And it will become possible for uh, people in a variety of different areas who have expertise in other aspects of the real world or other aspects of science to start applying the techniques successfully to bring intelligence to a, a larger range of systems. To me, um, it's an opportunity for the faculty of IC, which includes many people who are working on very uh, a very large number of different aspects of computer systems and computing and intelligent systems to collaborate across the EPFL campus to work with people in other schools who have uh, very interesting applications, very interesting problems uh, for which we may already have the solutions or for which we would like to work on the solutions for. So it's an opportunity to bring together the talent that's at EPFL and get us to work on bigger, more ambitious projects that could have a larger impact on both uh, the school, but also on society uh, in general. There are a number of collaborations that are getting started right now. Uh, we've been working on a new area of intelligent systems called edge computing, where instead of bringing all the data centrally into a data center, uh, you try to disperse the computation close to where the data is collected, which has a lot of advantages in terms of latency, in terms of power consumption, but also in terms of privacy and security, which is a big deal in uh, the research that goes on in our school. So we're uh, hopeful to find uh, collaborations with various other projects with inside EPFL where we can develop our ideas and see them actually be applied in building uh, actual systems, which is, I think, uh, a key aspect of this incentive for intelligent systems is that we would like to build systems, not just work on the aspects of systems. <laughs>